Tony Peterson here for Top 5 Rock List, and today we will be uh, discussing the Top 5 Debut Albums of, uh, by uh, Rock Bands. Um, uh, it's a warm day today. I just finished up uh, a day of cleaning windows, which I've got a uh, window cleaning business here, and um, I, I had intended on... on uh, doing a lot of these videos while I uh, clean the windows, but everybody's home during this uh, COVID uh, corona deal. Uh, uh, today is April 22nd, and uh, everybody's home, and I just don't want to be walking around in people's backyards uh, talking loudly and uh, talking about, talking about uh, stuff that they don't really want to listen to. So... Here I am in my car again today, discussing the top five debut albums, and let's uh, let's get things started here. Um, I'm going to go number five, uh, Van Halen's first album. Um, that album, uh, when I got it, I was oh, probably uh, oh uh, what 14 years, 15, 14 years old, something like that, and um, we had never heard anybody play the guitar like Eddie Van Halen played it. And, you know, when Eruption starts at the beginning of the album, you just, uh, you, you can't figure out what's going on. This was kind of before electronic music um, really was big. And, uh, you know, uh, it was just kind of starting to, beginning, uh, to, we were beginning to hear some electronic sounds. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it almost seemed like uh, he was doing something electronically with uh, with computers and then, you know that this is before uh, YouTube and everything like that, so we had no idea what he was doing until you get you got to see him live. You had to actually see him live because uh, they didn't play a lot on, you know, they didn't show them on TV and etc. You had to see him live to see what the heck he was doing with with uh, you know uh, the way he was going up and down the uh, guitar uh, uh, with his uh, thumbing on, fingering on and on and off. Uh, and uh, just incredible. So uh, that's number five. Number four, I'm going with. Uh, now remember, these are my top five. They don't. It's not a definitive list. Your list, I'm sure, will be different. This is my top five list. Um, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, where I was in that point in my life and etc. So, um, you know, disagree with me if you want. Disagree in the comments. That would be great. As long as you do so politely, um, I, I, what I'm hoping to do is have a discussion here. So, moving on, this is number four. Number four, I'm going with Pearl Jam 10. Um, I was probably uh, 30 years old when that came out, and um, you know, at the time when you're 30 years old, 30 years old, you start feeling like you're too old for some of the new, for for some of the new trends and etc. And the way that album sounded to me, the way uh, it resonated with me, I realized I was not too old for uh, new music. And, uh, you know, I still listen to that album today. I, I love it. Um, number three, I'm going to go with uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash first album. Um, I believe that came out in 1969, and I think it won the Grammy for the uh, Best New Artist. And, uh, you know, that, that album is, is just an absolute masterpiece. Um, Stephen Stills, his guitar playing, his, um, uh, it, it's incredible. You know, uh, um, I think he, uh, you know, he, he created most of the songs and the other guys just kind of came along and, and added their vocals, which was a big deal. Um, vocally... Um, it's probably as good as, as any album. Um, it, it's, it's a fantastic album. It's a masterpiece. In fact, it's probably out of these top five, that may be the best, uh, musically as far as masterpieces go out of this top five. Um, however, you know, I was only six years old when that came out, so I really didn't, uh, start listening and I really didn't start get into that album. I was into Crosby, Stills, and Nash, but not that album until I was 
Oh, you know, and probably until the late 80s, uh, maybe even the early 90s. So, um, number two, I'm going to go with uh, Boston's first album. Um, it may not be as good of an album as some of these other ones I'm listing, but uh, when that album came out, I think I was in about the eighth grade, and everywhere you went, people were either talking about this album or they were listening to this album. Um, no album, possibly Nirvana, never mind. Um, but I've never seen an album debut and just really take off the way, uh, that, that Boston album took off and just took the world by storm. Um, that's, uh, you know, it, it was, it was a tidal wave. So that brings us to number one, uh, probably going to be a, a surprise for some people, but Number one, I, I'm i going with R.E.M. Murmur. Um, it changed the way I listen to music. Uh, that, that was kind of a, a white line in the sand, you know, a, a line in the sand, not necessarily a white line in the sand, but a line in the sand. It changed the way I listen to music. Um, I previously was listening to music, uh, you know, kind of with my, with my guts and with my hips and, uh, you know, uh, whatever kind of got my uh, testosterone flowing was what was what you know kind of brought me um to an album um and rem murmur uh made me realize that you can listen to an album with your brains and enjoy it just as much as with your guts and with your hips um you know kind of that interplay between the lead guitar and the bass player uh, mike mills and uh, peter buck um I guess I got those backwards. Peter Buck is the lead guitar player, but um, kind of that uh, that interplay between those two, um, just something I'd never really heard before. Uh, you know, the jangly guitar we had heard with the birds, but uh, Peter Buck kind of took it to a new level uh, melodically, and uh, and then with that 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 uh, Mike Mills bass guitar, the way it kind of weaves its way in and out of uh, uh, out of the, uh, guitar lines. It's, it's amazing. Um, and then, um, Mike Stipe's, uh, vocals. I don't think anybody knew what the hell he was singing about. Um, so, you know, a lot of people probably that turned a lot of people off, but for me, it, it, it was a turn on. Um, it, it allowed me to create my own interpretations of the songs and what they were about. Um, I suppose I probably, you know, if I sing along to this album, I probably have 50% of the words wrong, but I sing them. I think of a song, uh, the way, the way it, it, it brings meaning to me, you know, the way I want to hear it. Uh, you know, the, I, I hear the words the way I want to hear them. So that's my top five, uh, uh, number one, R.E.M. Murmur. Number two, Boston. Number three, Crosby, Stills and Nash. Number four, Pearl Jam 10. Number five, Van Halen. And uh, a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, the Doors' first album, amazing. Uh, the Cars' first album, uh, you know, I got, I've got a story about the first time I heard that. Um, Cheap Trick, their first album, I love. The Beastie Boys' first album, of course, was uh, what kind of... Uh, Turn me on to hip hop rap, and uh, ACDC's first album uh, I think is an amazing album. So those are kind of some honorable mentions that any one of those honorable honorable mentions could have probably been listed in my top five, but um, uh, today I left them out. Once again, this is Tony Peterson with top five rock lists. Uh, Hit the like button down there. Uh, so please subscribe, and um, let's have a dis let's have polite discussions um, about my lists and your lists. And um, I will see you again next week.